Hello friends, today I want to make hair accessories. At the moment, I'm a little bit fixated on having my hair accessorized, whether it's clips, headbands, hats, beanies, scarves. I just feel like I want something around this area that's a little bit extra. So today I'm gonna make a few more pieces to add to my collection. I think I wanna try some really roughly scrunchies, maybe a few really small hair ties, maybe some tulle bows, maybe some knitted bows. It just depends how much I can get through. But let's accessorize together. <laughs> also, if you're new here, my name is Kylie. I'm a sewist here on YouTube. I love making things and I'm so happy that you're here. Let's do some sewing. The first thing I wanna make today are some tulle bows. I have some excess pre-cut tulle at the moment. They come in six inch pre-cut rolls. And I just trimmed some off the other day and put them in my hair as I was rock climbing. So they were just floating behind me as I was climbing. And I was like, this feels great. So I'm going to stitch them up and make them proper. There is no need to have pre-cut tool for this little craft, but I had extra, so that's why I'm using it. You could just get a meter or two of tool from your local craft store and that would be perfect. But basically I cut out a length of tool. I folded it in half and ironed it down. You're probably not meant to iron tool, but I've never had a problem with it. So if it works, it works. Then I sewed down the short edge, pivoted my foot and sewed all the way down the long edge of that ribbon. I don't back stitch anymore on tool. I just reduce my stitch length to the smallest stitch length and then slowly make it bigger. And that seems to hold the stitches in place without it looking very bulky. It's fairly common for tool to be unhemmed. So in theory, you wouldn't even really need to sew this up. You could just buy some tool and put it in your hair, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of a finished look because why not? And I'm hoping it adds a little bit more durability to the shape of the bow. After trimming my seam allowance, I then flipped my bow right sides out. If you can even call it a bow, it's just like a length of tool that I sewed, whatever. Then I pressed it again, cautionary warning, maybe test your iron on your tool before you do this, but whatever. I also kind of ironed in the seam allowance at the bottom edge that we left open so we could flip it out. So yeah, I, I, I tucked that in top stitched it down all four sides of the ribbon and it's literally done that's the whole thing i just gave it a little press and now that it's done i'm just going to repeat that process for the second bow very easy but i seriously felt like a princess wearing these to rock climbing they were just floating in the wind very enjoyable fabrication and here are the finished bows i adore them i think they would look great in different colors different widths different lengths I think I have to make a few more options because they're very, very lovely to wear and I've already gotten a few compliments on them since recording this video, so awesome. Okay, well, I had to take a break last night because of cramps and I ended up finishing my bows and I have returned for an accessory day. Here are the little bows. I love them. <laughs> and I think what I want to start the day off with is some knitting. Here are my Pinterest picks for inspiration. I think I want to do some knitted bows that I can put at the end of a braid. And also I want to make a knitted scrunchie. If you know me, I'm predominantly a crochet girl, so I actually have to learn how to do this, which is an excellent segue into the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. I'm traditionally a crochet girl, so getting into knitting has been quite intimidating. I have done one and a half projects and the half project I'm really stuck on because it's intimidating. So I hypothesize that if I get a few small projects under my belt, it's gonna help me build some confidence. So I ran to my favorite online learning community, Skillshare, so that I could learn a little bit more and just gain some more momentum with my knitting skills. This class called Easy Knitting Basics for Beginners knit a DIY scrunchie and it has been excellent. It's a thorough and well thought out class that goes step by step through the whole process of knitting this super cute scrunchie. As an extreme beginner, it's been easy to follow and it's only taken me about one and a half hours to create. Completing this class has been very encouraging to me as a baby knitter and I'm also excited that there are so many other knitting and crochet classes available on Skillshare by lots of other teachers, so I have so much to learn. And y'all know I love learning. If you didn't know, Skillshare is the largest online learning 
learning community and it has thousands of engaging and well-taught classes led by industry professionals across lots of different fields like photography, graphic design, illustration, productivity, crafting and so much more. Skillshare can help you take your skills or your passion or your career or your little side hustle to the next level. So if this sounds like something that would interest you, Skillshare have an amazing offer for you. The first 500 people to click the link in my bio will receive one month free of Skillshare. So jump on that, click the link and get started with your learning journey today with Skillshare. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, super cute little scrunchie. You should definitely check out the tutorial on Skillshare because it was really awesome. But basically I used six millimeter circular needles, uh, this sort of chunky, maybe like 10, 12 ply mohair kind of vibe on. I yeah, here it is. It's Abbey Road Glory Glory. 65% microfiber, 35% mohair. I got it on sale for $10. For a ball this big. I thought that was kind of good. And yeah, there's a hair tie in the middle and you sew the hair tie into this little tube. Oh, it's adorable. I've actually been wearing this scrunchie okay, non-stop since hair. I've made it. It's so insanely comfortable. It's very squishy. It's the right amount of elasticity. I think it's very nice on my curly hair. 10 out of 10. And I even did it in a little bun for you, which I think looks hilarious, but whatever. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> This whole video, I'm just going to be switching my hair accessories. I'm excited. Okay, while I'm on the knitting train, the next thing I want to do is to knit some little hair bows to put at the end of braids. I recently thrifted this cone of three-ply yarn. I don't know if it's cotton or acrylic, but I don't care. And I stole these four millimeter needles from my mum last night. I did a little mock-up of one of these bows yesterday and I knit them on my circular needles and it was just so annoying because it was literally like five stitches that I cast on and then the the big circular needle thing was just getting stuck with the yarn and it was just stupid so these are going to be better today I think I'll show you how I made it it's extremely easy and I think it's going to be very cute I'm going to make my other one now I don't know if other people have this experience, but I think the first project that I worked on when I learned how to knit as a kid was a scarf, which is just casting on a certain amount and then just you just go backwards and forwards until it's really long. But the problem with that is that that takes ages. Scarves are long and fairly wide. I say knit yourself a ribbon. This is just a small scarf, but you still get to practice the stitches. So basically for this bow, I cast on five or maybe six stitches, if only I could remember what I did last night. I think it was five. And then I literally just did stockinette stitch backwards and forwards until it was my desired length. I'm not going to show you how to knit because honestly I barely know how to knit myself and it would be more beneficial to go and see someone else do the stitches. But yeah, cast on five, super easy. And then stockinette stitch is basically one row is knit, the next row is purl. Knit purl, knit, purl, and then it creates that really classic stitch like this, if it will focus. <laughs> that just like classic pretty knit stitch that you see on sweaters and stuff, like simple sweaters. This took me for like half an hour, which actually seems like a long time, but basically I'm just gonna repeat it. Well, you guys let me know if I start to over explain stuff on my YouTube videos and you get really bored of it and you hate it. I would love to know because I feel like I always want to give more information rather than less. So in the off chance that you want to recreate exactly what I did, then maybe you have a fighting chance at that endeavor. So yeah, I try and give information, but maybe it's too much information. I don't know. Let me know. I really love reading all of you guys' comments. I've learned so much from you all. I literally... I am like us. I just want to ask you questions and then just get all of your information into my brain because you're all so smart and clever and I really appreciate it. So thank you for that. Finished my little bows. They're so cute and just like little fluffy guys. This feels like such old school YouTube just showing you different hairstyles and DIY accessories. But I'm totally here for it. Okay, here we have a little, little braid. Just a classic braid. <laughs> I hope I made it a good length. <gasps> it's so cute. Look. Aw. Okay, let me do the other side. Okay, extremely cute. 
I like the vibe. Well, the bows took a little longer than I would have probably liked, probably about half an hour to 40 minutes each, which is quite long, but I did work with an extremely fine yarn and a relatively small needle. So if you had a chunkier yarn or even like two strands of yarn, like a mohair and something else would be so pretty, it would just go by a lot faster. So I think I'll definitely make more of these, if not one big bow out of a thick yarn. And I think I'll fly through it. Okay, on to the next. Okay, the next thing I want to make is something quite highly requested on my Instagram and YouTube, and it is a tutorial for these little clips I wear in my hair. You may have seen them before. I have these little flowers, and they're just like a little clip. And I also have these stars. And both of these pairs of clips are handmade by my beautiful boyfriend. Now, don't worry. I already asked him if he wouldn't mind if I shared the process of how he made them. So I will do my very best to show you some of the construction techniques in these little clips. Both of them require stuffing, which I actually don't have in my sewing kit. So I think I'm just gonna stuff mine with scraps. The only other thing you'll need is some clips. I just got mine from the $2 store. And I think it's good if it's kind of big because then you can put a relatively big accessory on it. The design of how to put this clip into the little thing is very simple. So once you figure that out, you could actually in theory make a bunch of these and have interchangeable designs with your clips. So Elijah actually did two different prototypes of the design. The first prototype was this hand sewn action. So the clip is simply hand sewn to the back of the clip and that is effective. But the second prototype is very much improved in my opinion, in which he made two buttonholes in the bottom section of the clip so there's two layers of fabric here, the top and the bottom, and then there's two buttonholes that are wide enough to fit the clip, and then you can simply thread the clip through, snap it closed. I decided to make a flower, so I just needed to make a little circle pattern, cut out two of them for each side, and also a bunch of little petals. But you literally could do anything you want. You could do blobs, stars, rainbows, clouds, smiley faces, whatever you well please, you could make it into a clip. The world is an exciting place sometimes. Well, I actually just took a second to try and piece it together to make sure I could explain it to you properly. And I can now see that I would much prefer to be given this than to make it myself <laughs> because it is very fiddly. Basically, you're just gonna make all of these shapes separately and hand sew them together. I cut out two circles and sewed them all the way around, flipped it right sides out. And I don't have polyfill, but I do have some polyester quilt batting. So I've just been kind of tearing that off and using it as a fill. You could also use scraps, cut it really finely. And I just left a small gap in this hole to fill it with the filling, and then I hand sewed up the closing. I put two petals in, and I tried two different techniques for each petal. This first petal, I sewed all the way around, leaving the bottom edge open, and I put the fill in this way. And I found that really fiddly because the end opening was very small. And on this petal, I left the side open and I hand sewed that up. That was much easier to fill. Yes, you can see the stitching visibly, but I think I might prefer it in terms of not losing my sanity. My main thing I was thinking about was making sure there was enough feeling so that these petals stand up on their own. But now I look at them, they're looking very finger-like. So I think I just need to add a little bit more curve so they've got a bit more petal energy. Anyway, I'm just gonna repeat this process 10 more times. Hopefully you can see the difference between my two petals. I'm gonna see how this shape goes here. But I also think it might look kind of cute if they're just all free cut and free formed. And then it will have this kind of like organic vibe to it. Watch me make these little flower petals as I shamelessly self-promote my Patreon. Oops, sorry. Also, hi patrons. Um, massive shout out to my beautiful patrons. You guys are the best. If you are interested in more Carly B content, that's very sweet of you. And I do have a Patreon. I do a one hour long podcast. I call it Craft Club. And basically I grab a craft or a project that I'm working on and you do the same. And we just hang out and chat about sewing, knitting, crocheting, making stuff, patterns, sewing history, costuming, every single thing that's interesting in this creative, creative world. It's very, very fun. And I answer any questions if you have any. Um, it's lovely. And the other thing I do is a pattern breakdown, which is like a really kind of long in-depth breakdown of something that I've made, something that you want more information on, maybe something that 
we would all like to make together and I just write a big journal entry about it with pictures and and drawings and it's very nerdy and it's very fun and that's my patreon and you should check it out if you like I definitely really appreciated these flower and star clips before but now that I'm making it I really appreciate it because <laughs> they're fiddly man I think it will be worth it though okay here it is it's good but it it's not as good as the one Elijah made me. It really isn't, but it's good. And... There it is. Little cutie. Um, now I'm just gonna repeat that. I think that probably took me an hour. And a bit. It's so long. Two hours later. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> They are really cute, they do take time, and they were really annoying to make. I rang my boyfriend halfway through and I was like, these are the worst. He was like, I know. <laughs> so yeah, do with that what you will. I'll put them in my hair though, they are. They are pretty cute. Okay, after all of this accessory making, there is still one thing I really desperately want to try and create, and it is this sort of big scrunchy trend I've seen a lot on Pinterest. One of these scrunchie brands is a small business, I believe they're called Good Squish and you should check them out. They make these really cool, humongous scrunchies. But there are also a lot of other scrunchies that I love on Pinterest that kind of feature a lot of layers or really big dimensions so that when you turn around, it's just like the back of your head is all just scrunchy. So I think I wanna try one maybe with lace around it and one with multiple layers so I can see if I can get a nice voluminous frilly scrunchie. Not exactly sure how to go about it because I've only ever made regular scrunchies, but let's have a little play and experiment. For my first go, I cut out a big rectangle, I sewed it into a loop, I attached my lace on one side of it, and then I made my whole scrunchie using the burrito method, and then I flipped it right sides out in the next clip. Usually with the burrito method, you would leave a small gap in this side seam to flip it all right sides out, but I actually left a gap in the side seam of the the width ways instead of the length ways. This little tiny join here, right in the center. And apparently, I should be able to just pull this out. I watched a video. Who knows if this is gonna look stupid or not? It feels like it will. Oh, okay. I'm realizing I wanted lace on, on both side seams, but because I did it on the fold, it's only on one. I can fix that. I actually have no idea what I'm doing, except for the fact that what I just did then was not what I wanted. And I'm scrapping it. I want the lace to be at the top and the bottom. And if I'm just folding it in half and sewing it there, I only have one seam, so there's only one place the lace can go, and I need the lace to have two. I need to have two laces. So we're gonna try again. Gonna try again. Also guys, I did get a leather thimble. A lot of you told me to get a leather thimble, and I did. I just needed to tell you that. Okay, I have like a one meter rectangle by about 17 centimeters. And this time I cut out two of these rectangles, wedged the lace in the middle, sewed it all, all the right sides in, and then flipped it right sides out, pressed it. I've seen people make this scrunchie now by sewing a channel in the middle, threading through the elastic. So then it kind of like scrumples up and then there's two layers of lace around the outside edge. Super cute. Not enough lace for me. I want four. That might be crazy, because I think that's gonna be so much material. But at this stage, I'm just really fascinated in the concept. So I think I just want to repeat this and then sew them together. Ah, I feel like it's gonna be a lot of material. I just have to try it. I sewed down my elastic channel right in the middle, and this actually is two layers of the scrunchie here. It's kind of hard to see, but there's two on top of each other. I then thread my elastic through all the way through. I sewed my elastic up, and then I did a French seam to finish this edge, which I can't say I really enjoyed as a finish. It was a little bit clunky, especially with this many layers of fabric. Okay, okay. Conceptually cool, but unfortunately, my elastic has no stretch. I can't make it over again. That would be crazy. And it's just a bit heavy, so it just like immediately slides off my hair. Cool idea to make it doubled up, but I think I just want to do it once more. 
singled. The next day, I have to improve this. I made this crummy toile last night and it just has to be better. I meant to wrap up my video, but you guys know me, if my project is not finished well, I cannot sleep. I have to come back and improve and that's what I'm gonna do. I actually had done one more failed scrunchie attempt between this one and my first scrunchie. So I was getting a bit discouraged at this point, but I did figure it out. I cut out two big rectangles and sewed the first one fully into a loop. And the second one I sewed all the way down, leaving a small gap in the middle. Um, so it's about two centimeter gap and you can see I, I start sewing here again. And so that means I'm gonna press them out in the next clip. Press out the first one, that's fully a sewn loop. Press out the second one, oop, little gap, little gap for the elastic, very important. I then iron down about one centimeter of seam allowance on both loops, on both long edges of the scrunchie, because we're just gonna top stitch everything down. No flipping right sides out, just top stitching. So I'm just wedging the lace in between the two layers. And in theory, I'll just top stitch it down. I think this method is actually gonna work, aye aye. I then just top stitch all the way down both sides of the scrunchie, making sure that all three layers were caught. And then I also just sewed the elastic channel, the channel for the elastic in the center of the scrunchie, just making sure it was wide enough for my elastic. Okay, I've got about six and a half centimeters of elastic, and I'm gonna thread that through. So I don't know if I told you, but my fabric is about 100 centimeters long and about 17 or 18 centimeters wide. And I cut out two of those. So one, I guess, for the bottom and one for the top. Okay, I think we've reached the promised land. I just kind of top stitched that small gap closed. And I'm really pleased. I just ended up top stitching down that tiny gap that I had open that I could thread the elastic through. And that is very much so unnoticeable and I'm so pleased that I could finish the scrunchie without using a French seam because I just feel like it's a lot more harmonious. So you could just wear it once over your bun like that or you could double it up like in this next clip which is a little bit more secure and probably my preference. And wearing it doubled over is more of the tension that I need to wear it without a hair tie so it's good that it can function for both purposes. Okay, I'm saying goodbye to the video for real now. Thank you so much for joining me on this little adventure making hair accessories. It was super fun. It was very satisfying to get out all of my ideas and to finally figure out how to make the scrunchie, which shouldn't have taken me so long, but regardless, we made it together. <laughs> if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you want more content like this, you can subscribe or you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Patreon, and my website where I make one of a kind, happy handmade things. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.